Good day to our modular learners for creative writing under the Humes from sections St. Elizabeth and St. John Bosco. My name is Mr. Julius Gomez. I am the one who made the modules that you are answering, that you have been answering. And um, this video is intended for all of you, a special video that I recorded discussing this very important discussions of lesson, specifically talking about meter and foot. This lesson is actually part of your week five to six learning guide that you have just submitted. And I found out that most of you don't actually understand this meter and foot. Um, in spite of all the discussions and explanation written in the module or inside the module. So I find it very necessary to really explain to you this particular lesson because at least 30 points of this lesson was taken and were part rather of your examination for first periodical exam. So uh, I want you to listen very carefully and join the discussion so that it will help you also answer some of the questions in your first periodical exam. Are you ready? I hope you are. Let's talk about this one. Conventional forms of poetry, specifically meter and foot. Defining it, a meter contains a sequence of several feet where each foot has a number of syllables such as stressed and stressed. Hence, a meter has an overall rhythmic pattern in a line of verse, which a foot cannot describe. To explain this one, this means that every syllable in a line is a foot, like the word as. It is a one-syllabic word. Meter class focuses more on the numbering of syllables and rhyme patterns in poetry. If we are going to have this word as, as an example, this is one sound. This is one meter. Okay? Uh, when a syllable is paired by another syllable, they, are, they form a foot like the word asleep. So the word as only ha is only one syllabic word. If we are going to have the word asleep, there are all, already two syllables in there. Therefore, they are considered one feet. Sometimes, one syllable is foot, but one pair or two syllables is feet. I hope that is understood. Okay? Now, further, this is an example of a sentence. She said she will never leave me. If we are going to count the number of syllables in this line, she said she will never leave me. So there are eight syllables in this line. The formula is dividing the number of syllables into two, and the result is how many feet there is in the line. Ibig sabihin, you are going to divide the number of syllables into two. So eight divided by two is four, meaning four pairs of sound, meaning four feet. Okay, she said, this is the first, this is the first um, pair, she will, the second pair, never is the third pair, leave me is the fourth pair. All right, what we are talking now is actually what we call the meter according to number of syllables. Okay, I hope you get that. Now, there is actually a formula for number of feet and its equivalent meter, okay? In this column, we can see here the number of foot or feet, meaning number of pair sound. Again, number of pair sound. If there's only one sound or one syllable, that is what we call monometer, okay? Correction, this is not just meter, but monometer. If there are at least two Two pairs of sound, two pairs of sound, dimeter. Three pairs of sound, trimeter. Four pairs of sound, tetrameter. Five, penta. Six, hexa. Seven, heptameter. Eight, octameter. Nine, nonameter. And ten, decameter. I hope that is clear, no? 
This is what we call measurement of meter according to the number of pairs. Okay? One pair, monometer. Two pairs, diameter, so on and so forth. Now, let's go back. What is now the meter of this particular line according to number of syllabic pairs? Again, let's, let's go back to the number of syllables in this line. She said she will never leave me. So there is eight. What's again the formula? Divide the number of syllables into two. So eight divided by two is four. So four, what is the meter for four pairs of sound? It is tetrameter. Understood? That is how you get the meter of a line according to number of syllables. I hope that is clear. Okay? Now, this, there is also what we call types of meter according to syllabic pattern. What is that syllabic pattern? Meaning the unstressed stress pattern. Unsa man ang stress and unstressed pattern, sir? Pattern, sir? This has something to do with pronunciation of the words in the line. Remember your topics about intonation when you were in grade school and junior high school? We raise our voice when there is a stress in a word, okay? And then we don't raise our voice if, there is, if, if the word or the syllable is on stress. So just like this particular meter, we are looking for the pattern of the sound in a line of poetry. So it may be either of these five. There are five types of uh, sound patterns in poetry. English poetry employs five basic meters, including number one, iambic meter. What is the sound pattern for this? Unstressed, stressed. Okay. For trochaic meter, it's un. It, I mean, sorry, it's stressed, unstressed. For spondaic meter, it's stressed, stressed. For anapestic meter, it's unstressed, unstressed, stressed. For dactylic meter, it's stressed, unstressed, unstressed. Okay? Do not get stressed, but you just have to be familiar of this I know, stress patterns. Okay? So when we say unstressed, we are going to have this particular line. Ana lang. Unstressed, flat. If it's stressed, we are going to use the diagonal up line. I hope you get that, okay? This is unstressed, this is stress. Now, let's have some examples of poems which contains this particular meter according to sound pattern, and we will also be incorporating what type of meter this particular poem has according to number of syllables. Let's proceed. Example number one, this is Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. Let's have this particular uh, stanza as we describe the first um, rhyme or yeah, the first sound patterns. All the syllables in yellow um, yellow color signifies stressed mark, meaning we are going to rise or raise rather our intonation in this particular part so that we will see what is the rhythm of the sound pattern that we are actually looking here. So if we are going to read this, again, raise our voice with these um, syllables that are in yellow color. So if we are going to read it, if music be the food of love, play on. Again, if music be the food of love, play on. So we are going to have that way. That's how you read that, okay? Signifying the unstressed and stressed syllabic pattern. Doing so, we will now know that this is an example of an iambic pentameter. Why? Because it contains unstressed syllables first and then a stressed syllable second. Meaning, ito ang unstressed, this is the stress mark. Unstressed, stress. Meaning, it's iambic. Going back to the pattern of iambic meter, it's unstressed, stressed. I hope you get that. Now, if we are going to count the number of syllables in this particular poem, 
we are going to consider the meter according to a uh, number of syllables on the first line. We are going to count if music be the food of love, play on. So there are 10 syllables in this line. What again is uh, the thing that we're going to do? Divide the number of syllables into two. So 10 divided by two is five. So there are five pairs of sound in this line. What are the pairs? If mu, that's the first one, sick b, the second one, the food, the third one, of love, fourth one, play on, fifth one. And how do we call a meter? According to syllabic number, which has five pairs, that is what we call, going back, a pentameter. That is why this particular poem here implores iambic pentameter. I hope that is clear. You can always rewind this video if there are things that you haven't get yet, so you can review as well. Next, example number two. This is The Explosion by Philip Larkin. All right, let us now try to uh, consider this particular um, stanza here. I'm um, sorry. Okay. Again, the syllables in yellow color signifies the stress syllables. Meaning, we are going to raise our intonation as we read this particular or following syllable. So how are we going to read this? Shadows pointed towards the pit head. Again, shadows pointed towards the pit head. So you follow the pattern? This is stressed on stressed. Stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, and stressed. All right, do you copy? So this exact contains trochaic meter. Trochaic because going back to the pattern, trochaic meter implores stressed, unstressed pattern. I hope you get that. Going back to the poem, if we are going to count the number of syllables in the first line, shadows pointed towards the pit head, there are nine. So what happens now if the number of syllables is in odd, meaning bunkig? Anilang class, you only have to consider the number of pair syllable. Okay? There are how many pair syllable in a nine syllabic line? Only four. Sir, so, unsaan mo ng bungkig, don't mind the bungkig. Alright? You only have to mind the number of pairs syllable. Claro? So, there are four pair of um, syllables in this particular line for this particular poem. No? So, it is called tetrameter. Going back to the table that I've shown you a while ago, if there are four pairs of syllabic sound, it's tetrameter. Okay? I hope you understand that. Let's now proceed to the third example. That's example number three, okay? This is Troilus and Cressida by William Shakespeare. Only a line, okay? Cry, cry, Troy burns, or else the Helen go. So, if we are going to have this particular line here, the underlined syllables and words signifies stressed marks. No? Unsa gani ang isa sa meter which implores stressed, stressed pattern? It is a spondyk meter. Claro? Spondyk meter siya. So this line is spondyk. Pentameter. Nga no ganing pentameter? Count the number of syllables in this line. Cry, cry, tur burns, or else let Helen go. There, there are 10 syllables in this line. Divide by 2, it's 5. So 5 is pentameter. 
Did you understand? It's spondike because the rhyme pattern, I mean, sorry, the, the sound pattern implores stressed, stressed. And it's pentameter because it has 10 syllables divided by two pairs. There are five pairs of syllables in this line. That is why it is called a spondike pentameter. Okay? I hope that is clear. Example number four. This is The Hunting of the Snark by Lewis Carroll. Okay? Here is an example of a... Uh, Anapestic meter. On sagane, ang patterns, anapestic meter. Unstressed, unstressed, stressed. The underlined word signifies the stressed syllable. Okay? The words place, snark, and uh, syllable men. Okay? Signifies the stress marks. So if we are going to read the first line, just the palace, I mean, just the place rather, just the place for a snark. The bellman cried. Okay? So this is unstressed, unstressed, stressed. Excuse me. Unstressed, unstressed, stressed. Okay? So that is a anapestic meter. Okay? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's an anapestic meter. Because, again, let's... Atumbalikon ha... It implores what particular um, pattern? Unstressed, unstressed, stressed. It's anapestic. Now, if we are going to take the meter according to syllabic number, this particular excerpt of a poem according to, I mean, by Lewis Carroll, implores many type of meter according to syllabic number, which are the pentameter, hexameter, and the tetrameter. Why? Because if you're going to count the number of syllables for each of this line here, you can see that they varied, just like the other examples that I gave you. But again, what you're going to consider as the meter according to the syllabic number will be the first line. Okay? Now, let's count in the first line, just the place for a snark, the bellman cried, ten. On the second line, as he landed his crew with care. Eight, that is why it's tetrameter. And then, let's go to the, uh, the fifth line. There was also a beaver that paced on the deck. So, 12 syllables, that is hexameter. But again, going back to the first line, it only has 10 syllables divided by 2. There are only 5 pairs of sound. That is why we can say that this is anapestic pentameter. I hope that is clear. While it is so hard to make a poem which contains a perfect rhyme pattern, I mean sound pattern rather, and number of syllables per line, uh, it may be difficult but it is actually possible as you have learned through the discussion of sonnet in your modules. Okay? So that is the fourth type of meter according to sound pattern. Again, anapestic meter, unstressed, unstressed, stressed. Now let's proceed to the last type of meter according to sound pattern. If anapestic meter implores unstressed, unstressed, stress pattern, the last one is the kabaliktaran. This is stress, unstressed, unstressed. Again, the words or syllables that are in an underline, okay, signifies a stressed pattern. So, half a league, half a league, half a league onward. Okay? So, this is stressed, unstressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed, unstressed. Okay? So, it is duck. Because it implores stressed, unstressed, and stressed pattern. Now, what is the meter according to syllabic number? It's trimeter. Tulo. Why? There are three pairs of sound here. Let's get the first line. Half a league, half a league, half a league. 
So six syllables divided by two, there are three. Three sound pairs. Okay? That is why it's trimeter. So uh, that's just how we can figure out the um, meter of lines in poetry. And of course, considering also the meter according to sound pattern and meter according to syllabic pattern. Okay, now let us have this practice. You practice this by yourself. I will give you at least one minute to get only the first line, huh? Get the first line only. Uh, take this first line. Get the sound pattern of this line and then count the number of syllables to get the meter according to syllabic number. All right? Go. I will give you at least one minute and I will tell you after one minute what is the correct answer. One minute starts now. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. All right, good. For those who tried, I hope you really try because this is actually how your examination would be. I have given 10 lines in your examination wherein you are going to get the sound pattern and also get the meter according to syllabic number. So in this particular line here, this is how you are going to read this. Tell me not in mournful numbers. Again, tell me not in mournful numbers. So that is stressed, unstressed, stressed, unstressed mark. So in the explanation that we've had a while ago, if it has stressed, unstressed pattern, what do you call the meter according to stressed pattern? It's trochaic. Trochaic. According to number of syllables, let's count. There are Let's have it. Tell me not in mournful numbers. Eight syllables divided by two. There are four pairs here. So this is a tetrameter. So this line here is a trochaic tetrameter. I hope you understand that. So that's how 20 points of your examination would be. Okay, in the first periodical. I, will, I have given there 10 different lines. What you're going to do again, as I've said, get the meter according to rhyme, I mean according to sound pattern, and then get the meter according to number of syllables. I hope everything is clear. To those who watch the video until the end, thank you so much. But for everyone, God bless you in your examination for the first periodical exam. Thank you so much for watching this video and God bless you all. Goodbye.